Character development is one of the, I think, you know, obviously the most important parts of any good story. If you don't have good characters that you care about, that are interesting, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter what happens. You don't feel anything. You don't feel anything. You yeah, the, the saying goes, bad plot can be saved by great characters, but the, but the, but bad plot, <laughs> no wait. But yeah, bad characters bad. can't be saved by a good plot. No, but a, but a great plot, I know the end now. The great a great plot cannot be saved if you have horrible character right. development. Yeah. So, so have you ever watched a movie? Not symmetrical. You're, <laughs> you're watching right. the movie <laughs> and you're in about three minutes and something doesn't feel right. Yeah. Something's off. Something's off. I can give you a perfect example. Uh the with the last airbender. Oh the movie. My God. Don't get me started. I, I, I couldn't you, believe you even how soon watched that? how soon I, I mean I was 30 seconds into the movie and I'm like, oh it's all wrong. The, it's what is, not working. It's not working at all. Right from the get-go, the character development was so epically bad because the special effects were amazing, the setting was amazing, there yeah. were all these things that were there that that you, I should have been appreciating, but the characters were wooden. You could you couldn't. I didn't care about anything. And the thing is, the source material was a cartoon that had great characters. I know. <laughs> what the <laughs> hell? They 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 blew it. They started with great characters. All right. So yeah. what what are the elements of a good character? And we're not going to give you a writing tutorial, but you know, just in terms of just appreciating a good character, characters need to have a personality. Obviously, they need to have a backstory. Um, you need to, and they need, they need to have details. You know, like when you're writing a good character, you need to answer questions that you might not think that you need to answer. Like, what's their favorite food? You know, how do they dress? They should have flaws. Oh yeah, they. What are their quirks? What they, are their flaws? What's important? Yeah. What's their motivation? What are they obviously? scared of? Right. Right. What are their skills? Right. What skills are they? Because that will, all these things could come out. You know, like we have like the Mandalorian hates droids. It's a little detail, that, but there's a history to it. There's a reason why he hates droids, and it comes into the plot. And we, we could think about, oh, he's not going to like that because yeah. it's the droids involved. Exactly. It gives you things to, to grab onto. Here's a great example just recently in Picard. In Picard mm -hmm. se season three, there was the Captain Shaw hated Picard and, and Riker. And, and when I saw that happen, I was like, well, you're disrespecting yeah, Picard, your beef? a yeah. legend. I'm thinking this guy's a douchebag. He really <laughs> he was a douchebag. But, but then, a few, yeah, he, he also was a douchebag. Yeah. But to do that, that was the, the initial impression. But then episodes later, it's like he finds out, yeah, he was like a lowly like Lieutenant or something mm -hmm. in in Wolf 359, and he watched thousands of people die, and he was like- and, and the hands and, of Locutus and, aboard. And, and yes, and yeah. Picard was on a board ship as Locutus. So that it makes it all made sense. That was a critical part of his backstory, and yes. one of the best scenes in, so far in the first four episodes. So there's, there's an arc to the character, mm -hmm. and there's also an arc to our understanding of the character, ah, right, right. right? Because not everything is a, you don't get an information dump at the beginning. Yeah, it takes time. It's a little mystery, you yeah. know, you discover things over time, and things, I think the one of the best characters that had that simultaneously the characters going through changes and our knowledge of the characters going through changes is the Kingslayer mm -hmm. from the Game oh of Thrones. Oh my God. Right? Yeah. Wonderful you character. You hate his guts. You, hate it. you like, go from hating his guts to loving him. Yeah, I was rooting for yeah, him at the end. Rooting, yes. Yeah, you know, for him at the end. I mean, and it was the same guy the whole time, but although he did evolve in a good way, you know, he's still the same character and, you, and you're debating his decisions at the end of what's he going to do. And it's really interesting because it's a very compelling character. What more arc, than what anything, arc. more than anything, characters have to be memorable and interesting. Mm -hmm. They can't be flat and boring. And, you know, that's usually characters that they don't know what they don't know what they're doing. They don't have, you know, they don't have any background or details or anything that to fill them with life. You when know, you're, so they fall flat. When you create a protagonist, yeah. well, you could, this goes for antagonists as well, but like you're basically the person that the story is about. Yeah. Luke Skywalker, for example. Yeah. You have to go back into that character's history and know the world that they're from, no, no details about them. So, you know, you ever hear like people say the, the story wrote itself? Yeah. I, I, you know, Brian Trent, who we had on the show last, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you, he and I have talked about this endlessly. We talk about writing stories yeah. and characters. And he says that when he fleshes out a character to this really high yeah. level, really high bar, that when he puts his character in a situation, he knows what the character is He knows gonna, what they're going to do. Right. He knows what you, they're going to yeah, do. Yeah, because they're a character, a real live person. Exactly. You know, virtually speaking. And this, like he, so he, th this is an interesting thing to do now. Now, what, go out there and watch your favorite TV show. And then watch her least favorite TV show and compare the two and try to predict, like, do I know a character well enough? Is this show giving me enough information about a character where I can predict what they're going to do? Like, I, I was doing yeah. this to myself earlier today. I'm like, would I be able to predict what Luke Skywalker would do? Mm -hmm. You know, take Luke Skywalker from the first three movies, that, that version of Luke. Mm -hmm. Would I be able to 
predict what he's going to do in a lot of circumstances? And my answer to that is, yeah, I think I could. I think I really could totally. wrap my head around where he so, would go with it. The reason why one of the reasons why Star Wars, you know, the the original trilogy was so popular and and you know, mind blowing was because it it revolved around characters that were all really well written and and very compelling. Um, and you know, I was reading you know one review of the various Star Wars trilogies, and they made a very good observation, which was they said, "Here's an exercise, and, and this tells you like how well the characters are developed. Describe uh, Han Solo." Yeah without using any physical description, right? Don't describe him physically, but just give me a, a sentence about his personality, about, about yeah. what, who he is. Yeah. And you could say he's a lovable rogue or whatever. You can come up with a description about him or Luke Skywalker is the naive, you know, whatever kid. Now, now give me a one line description of Princess Amidala from the first movie. Like there's nothing, there's, there's nobody, there's yeah. no character There's nobody there. there. There's nobody there. Yeah. Like you, you, you could, you would not debate what would they do. I don't know who cares what they would do. You can't <laughs> even think about it because you don't have anything to hang on to. Exactly. So characters need, need a spark of life. And the mm. way you give that to them is you actually write a story about who they are. Yeah. You got to figure out who that character is. This that this is all like character building 101. Yeah. Now to to amp it up a little bit. Characters also need to have a couple of very important things. They need to have an inner conflict mm -hmm. and an outer conflict. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. Um uh, and the outer I, conflict reflects the inner conflict. I'll use I'll use um, Ripley from the movie Aliens, right? One the of the second, best iconic sci-fi characters right. of all time. Second yeah. second movie in the franchise. So she Ripley was gone in, in cryostasis for so long that her daughter aged and died. So she comes back to Earth 50 years later and her daughter's dead, mm -hmm. right? Fast forward, they're sending her back to the planet where the alien was found and they, they colonized it. And there's a little girl that Ripley develops a relationship with, with Newt, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Ripley's oh, inner, inner conflict <laughs> is, you know, there's lots of inner conflicts that she's having, but yeah. one of her inner conflicts is she lost her daughter and, she, yeah. and she's totaled from that. And her outer conflict is she has developed a relationship with this little girl, and now she's saving that little girl's life. So she's fighting the aliens to save Newt's life. And it's very obvious what her inner mm -hmm. and outer conflict is. Now imagine if she didn't have those two things. Yeah. How, how right. good could that story have possibly been if, if we didn't have a reason to understand why Ripley attached herself to that little girl? It makes perfect sense. Now, and they also, did you know, yeah. they cut that scene when you, they, she found out what, what happened to her daughter. They, that was cut in the initial release, which was just so weird because, choice, because it yeah. ruins, it, it ruins that, that, wow, that that's bit of crazy. character insight. I never heard that. Yes, I ridiculous. remember seeing it. So whenever we saw it, yeah, I they, add, they added it back. All right, let's go one level deeper. Go ahead. So we're going to break characters down into protagonists and antagonists. heroes, yep. antagonists, villains, and supporting characters, right? right? Secondary characters. Because Let's start with secondary characters. I have a perfect example of a secondary character. Because they're so important. And it, it, yeah, it, you, it, it'll give, you can give it a second. I just want to say that I always know I'm watching a well-written show when there's a secondary character who means really nothing to the whole story, but they are interesting as hell. And you love yeah. them yep. instantly. Right? Yeah. Like in seconds, like there, there's a person with a whole life behind that stupid secondary character who's just filling this one little role, whatever it is. But secondary they, characters, though, help reveal the, the protagonist well, and yes, the antagonist. They, they, play, they can play a lot of roles. Yeah. You know, they could support the protagonist. They could be sort of their foil. They could be there to point out their problems. You know, they could create problems for the for the Yeah, like Malfoy is a foil to Harry Potter, right? Yeah. You know, and and but well, he's more he's more of a villain though. In, kinda, he's not the real villain. You know, he, he's, well, he's what he's at the lower lower tier. He's not really. All right, I'll give you a perfect one. This yeah. is my favorite, one of my favite of all time. Secondary. You, you might not agree with me right away, but let yeah. me explain. Admiral Piet, mm -hmm. Star Wars, right? Think about it. We learn a lot about Darth Vader by this guy having to interact yes. with Darth Vader. So we're yeah. seeing Darth Vader through his <laughs> eyes. <laughs> right. yes. We feel his fear when, when he has to go tell Darth Vader that they lost this. Remember when yes. Darth Vader was in that thing and his seat turns around, his helmet goes back mm -hmm. on, and that guy has to be the schmuck that tells him yep. Yep. that we can't find the ship right. or they're lost in the yeah. asteroid field. Like That relationship tells us a lot, and that character exactly. was essential to he, showcasing that relationship. We watched that character watch Darth Vader kill the guy that was 
yeah, yes. you know, the other admiral that he took his position. Yeah, his, yeah, his, his former right? boss, right? Like all Apology that, accepted, Captain Nita. We yeah. don't know anything <laughs> about Admiral Piat. We don't know anything about him other than he has to interact with Darth mm -hmm. Vader. And in those little interactions, we learn so much about Darth Vader. That's all mm -hmm. that really matters. It doesn't, right. it doesn't really yeah. matter yeah. about him. Or, or, all right, I'll give you another one that I'm sure you guys would agree with. This is a character that appeared. It was a short scene, and it was so compelling that he ex it exploded into... Another movie or Another something? Another series, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Oh yeah, that yeah. one goofy scene. Yeah, with all the with all the bounty hunters, and he was he stood out. He stood out. Him and the robot was it was it eight eighty eight IG eighty eight. Yeah. Um, and look what ha look what ha look where Boba Fett and now the Mandalorian went because of that one. He was a secondary character. We didn't have to ever see Boba him again. Fett is a great, fantastic secondary character because he you he gives the impression of a whole history. You want to know? A whole you window into know. a part of the world. Now I will argue that yeah. we. One of the first of all, he looks really cool. Yeah, that's that's, that's huge. That's Character huge. design did yeah. so much for this. But in that that's... moment, when Darth Vader points to him and says, "No disintegrations," yes, all of a sudden, is... all of a sudden, he's a badass. He's a badass. He's yes. a badass. Right. And he's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> all right. But here's, <laughs> and again, that's really, this is Star Wars because the you know like the, the, the different trilogies were so different. It's, it's such a good internal comparison. So you had right. the bounty hunters from you know, right. the Empire Strikes Back, who were all like, each one is more fascinating than the other, but you yep. know, with the pinnacle of Boba Fett. Then you go fast forward to Kylo Ren, mm -hmm. right? Do you remember that Kylo Ren had a crew? Yeah. Remember that? There was something, of, right? So yeah. they, yeah, the Knights of Ren or yeah, whatever. whatever. And yeah, yeah. They didn't, right? we didn't learn anything about that. They were nothing. Yeah, they were, they were nothing. completely absentee secondary characters. That was an opportunity for so much just uh, layering yeah. and yeah. intrigue and interest. Like we should have looked at one, at least, you know, that those characters go, that guy's got an interesting history and there should have been looks and things like, you know, it should have been totally yeah. engrossing. Well, they, they, and they were nothing. They were worse than red shirts. They, they were, were worse, red, than, they're worse than red shirts. They did it very well in Rogue One. Yeah. You know, the people that, that, you know, she mm -hmm. was hanging out with, like that yeah. crew that went, you know, I, I can't remember the names and all that stuff, but you look at them and they're iconic. You remember them. Yeah. You know what they look like. They have little personalities going on. And the start... robot? Yeah. Hello. Exactly. So secondary characters, I think, are a massive color yeah. to the story. Right. And they, they give us the opportunity to reveal things about our protagonists and our antagonists. Yeah, they, they're, they're incredibly useful. It, they, it's very tempting to treat them as window dressing and sort of underwrite them, but that's a mistake. And I can always tell lazy writing yep. when it happens. And when when I could tell that the writers invested a lot of thought into a into a very brief secondary character, I know that they that they're invested in. Yeah. You know. All right. So let's talk about heroes. What makes a good hero? And let's we're going to talk about our favorite heroes of all time mm -hmm. from all science fiction. So you know. Pulling off the elements we've already said, obviously there has to be something heroic about a hero, though they can be the reluctant hero. That's a very common theme, the reluctant hero. Um, there's the wait, there's the you know the Boy Scout hero again, the reluctant hero, the anti-hero. You mm -hmm. know, he's kind of a bad guy, but you know he's in like. And I would argue, for example, that you know the Mandalorian's kind of an anti-hero. He starts out as a bounty hunter. And Joel from The Last of Us is sort of an anti-hero. He's kind yeah. of doesn't care. He's just sort of a, a survivalist. Um, but we, you know, they're they're still heroes. Even Tony Soprano was an anti-hero. Mm -hmm. Definitely, still, he's he still on his side. Um, so, uh, but but then there's hero heroes. You know that are they're just Luke Skywalker. Yeah, Luke Skywalker. They're the good guys. They're on. They're on the. They're, we're rooting for them. We want them to defeat the devil, the, the villains. Um, but a an interesting hero, right, has flaws. Mm -hmm. They have demons of their own. Um, they have quirks. They have. They may have a checkered past there's something about them that makes them flawed mm -hmm. and it's those flaws that make them memorable and endearing um sherlock holmes is a is sherlock a holmes opium was, addict yep, or addicted and an asshole yep you know <clears throat> um yeah that's yeah sherlock holmes is uh, iconic you know for a the flawed hero you yep. know and that that template uh, he became the template for so many other so many other characters yeah, totally you know? and, when, right. and when he was written i mean it was it was he wasn't, you know, he wasn't saying, oh, look at this awesome, super smart guy. He was like making f like fun of that whole yeah, attitude, I, I, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the Arthur Conan Doyle didn't like Sherlock Holmes, didn't like the character. He he didn't think that, and he was surprised that he became so popular. Like, guys, this, 
he's an asshole. You're like, you get that, right? <laughs> that, you know, yeah, but you wrote him so well that he's lovable. Yeah. loved him. He, he became iconic. Yeah, right, right. That's why he, like, he, Doyle killed him off because he was sick of him. And then the fans made him yes. bring him back. <laughs> You know, made retcon, you know, he wasn't whatever. But that's a great example of that. All right, yeah. let's talk about our favorite heroes of all time. Does anybody want to go first? Well, I'm going to just throw out, I was going through the list, and one one that hit me was interesting. Let me, Terminator. Yeah. All right, now. Wait, wait, but I, the second who, movie. Who? Just, Arnold Schwarzenegger is a Terminator in, in, the, in, multiple, in the multiple movies. I love that, him, because he, he's a villain first, then he's a hero, and then there's also the whole duality of the you know, the, the flesh human on top and the robot evil robot mm-hmm. underneath. To me, that all that meshes together into an awesome character. Sure, I mean he wasn't, you know, he wasn't. It, the acting wasn't great. Maybe the writing wasn't stellar either. But the character itself, of course, you know, it's robots, science fiction. Yeah. I love I love robots. I own like a hundred of them, two hundred of them. And um, so I think he's a fantastic character because he embodies like the, the spectrum. The, uh, so much of no, the spectrum. I agree. It was brilliant to turn an iconic villain into a hero mm-hmm. that we then is yes. fighting on our side. And like all of the things, because we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, but villains are supposed to be more powerful than the hero, right? Yeah, usually. And, right? Yeah. yeah. And so now all the things that made us afraid of him like yeah but now he's our guy yes yeah. now he's yeah. on our side yeah. it was brilliant actually yeah. it was brilliant and so it, didn't, it kind of took care yeah. of the other issues. are we talking just sci-fi or basically any, any speculative yeah. fiction anything anything well i mean i think rick from casablanca is, yeah. is one of my he's a kind of an anti-hero in a way but he ends up the evolution of that character ends up being pretty extraordinary um i just absolutely love how broken he is i mean talk about a well-written mm-hmm. character oh my god his history is so is so complicated yeah. and interesting um, so yeah, I mean, I just absolutely mm-hmm. adore that movie and I love that character so much. I mean, his, he's so heartbroken. I, you feel every single thing that's going on in, in his heart when I watch that movie. Yeah. And then I have to, I have to give a shout out to Conan. Mm-hmm. I think, I think that character is so interesting. The way that Arnold played him in the movie was fantastic. And I think that, you know, he's also, <laughs> he's also a complicated character that has a really interesting background. You know, we mm-hmm. get to see his, what happened to him. Why did he become this character? We see him, his childhood. Right, right, and we, and we know why he is is this character, and he and he has a lot of you know he has a a, a lot of things going on. He's not stupid at all. He's a very intelligent mm-hmm. character. Mm-hmm. How about you, uh, the Doctor? Oh yeah, uh-huh, uh, nice. Doctor Who. Yeah, I mean, think of yeah. I mean, it's an iconic character. You know, we're trying to think a little bit outside the box on this, but I'm just going to have to give a shout out to the Doctor. So think about a character that is so well developed that they could literally be twelve different people. And still be the same character. Yeah. Right. Think about that. Yeah, that's great. That's a, it's it, the when the doctor goes through his regeneration, he becomes a different person. He's literally played by a different actor. His personality evolves. Mm-hmm. You know, his likes and dislikes evolve a little bit, but there's still a core that is the doctor, and that core is so strong that it shines through all of yeah. these multiple iterations. And that core is also awesome. It's iconic. It's a character that successfully navigates seemingly impossible situations through pure strength of uh, intelligence and optimism. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and that uh, you can't underestimate the value of that optimism. Right. Optimism, I agree. It shines through, you know, and it's always like that guiding light. It's like, yeah, it's going to work out. I'm going to, don't worry. I got a plan. You know, it, it, it'll, it'll be fine, even though he doesn't have any weapons and, you know, he's dealing with, you know, going against murderous armies of aliens. doesn't matter. He figures Paralyzed. something out. Yeah. Yep. I mean, yeah, he goes up against thousands of Daleks and he's, he, he makes it all work out in the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, and I'm always anxious to see that next iteration of him because it's like another right. version of the Doctor. You know, it's, it, it's unique in that, in that respect. And sure. of course, it's been... 60 years, 70 years, you know, you, you're, you don't, a character doesn't have that kind of staying power uh, unless there's something there's special, something special yeah. going yeah. on. All right. There. All right. Let's click over now to, uh, to villains or anti-heroes. I mean, or uh, pro antagonists, right? Yeah. Villains. So the villains are, um, there's, there's two kinds of villains. Mm-hmm. There's a well-written villain and there's a bad a badly written villain. <laughs> We've seen many examples of this idea. Like we, we call it a mustache twisting villain because they're one note. 
They're, they're, they're bad for, for being bad, they're, right? Yeah, they're evil for the sake of being evil. But what they're you Dr. want, evil. you want a, 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 a bad guy who you can almost relate to. Mm -hmm. it, but I got to throw this out there right from the get-go. The, what we know about, about Darth Vader in movie four, which is the first Star Wars movie, mm -hmm. we, we don't even know his motivations. The character is so awesome. He's, he was the best villain in that movie. And 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 I, who can even compete? You know, like, there's very few characters I, I I think could even get up to the height that Darth Vader yeah. was able to achieve. And he, we didn't really know much about him, and we didn't really know his motivations. But we wanted to know more. We about did, him. of course, we did. He was. Yeah. We, we we desperately wanted to learn more about. So him. So what makes a good villain? As I, when I already alluded to, villains. You know, first of all, they need to have a motivation. They need to have a morality, their own morality. They have it's, to have an inner code that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, there needs to be an inner code. It could be warped. It could be a tad askew, um, but it's there. They're not just evil for evil's sake or because they're psychopaths or whatever. That's more, if you're a psychopath, you're not really a villain, you're a monster. Yeah, that's, nice that's true. Um, you're, if you're, villains need to be, have something that that motivates them and, and makes them do They need a modus operandi. They, they, and, have, they, they yes. can't just get up in the morning and who can I kill today? Want to do know? bad things. Yeah. They, they have to have a, like a mission. They have to have something that they're fighting for that they yeah. believe in. That, that, that you know, Bob brought up Thanos, and Thanos is like the perfect example of this. It is. You can relate to what, in a way, Thanos was yeah. thinking he was doing the universe. The best villains solid. think they're heroes. Yeah, he, totally. thought, he thought he Absolutely. was doing the right thing, and and he really and he almost pulled you over to his side a couple of times. You're like, you you, you think about it. Yeah, you, you, you know, know, he makes you, you question think it about for a it. second. Yes, yeah. and if you could just do that, that's all that. That's a good villain right there. Yeah. So, but I agree. I mean, I looked at uh, you know dozens of lists of the best characters in sci-fi of all time, and. You know, hero, villain, whatever, Darth Vader's near the top of almost yeah. every list. Yeah.